UFC Apex. Another fight night card, another Apex show. But these are not the main events you will complain about ever, in my opinion, when you're talking about the Apex. A very strong one featuring the number six and number eight welterweights in the UFC. Sean Brady welcoming the veteran, Dorino Gilbert Burns. Uh, Luke, first and foremost, love this fight, brother. We mm -hmm. had Gilbert Burns on when the fight was first announced. Uh, are you itching for it like I am? Like we're, we're, You know you're going to see a scrap, but I think there's so many interesting storylines for each man about what's at stake and where they are at in their careers coming out of this. I mean, listen, is this going to be two Rock'em Sock'em robot situations? Probably not, but I really, really like this fight. I like this fight a lot. I think it's a big and important fight for Sean Brady, who obviously has done a great amount of winning, did have the loss to Bilal Muhammad, which set him back, but he rebounded against Kelvin Gastelum. Nevertheless, questions do persist out there, and I know he got after some of the folks on Twitter for the negative commentary, but in general, I don't think it's unfair to say um, some of the issues that were raised and put on display, both I would say in the Kiesa fight, but then in particular in the Bilal fight, has he fully sort of turned a corner past them? We're going to find out. We didn't get an answer to that in the Gastelum fight because his ground game was, in his top uh, game in particular dude, was... how about rewatching re re that like I did this morning? He that was, housed God, him. That was daddy pants. He housed him. And then, in particular, how many times Kelvin Gastelum tried to initiate a scramble and Brady was able to kind of surf and maintain either top position or back without losing it is I, I folks don't know how hard that is. That is he was so good at the it. The only competitive part about that fight was Biz Ping and DC trying to argue Talk over, over semantics yeah. on the uh, broadcast. Yeah. <laughs> but what I will say is there certainly were some questions in the Bilal Muhammad fight. By the way, I went back and I watched that one too. That was a little bit more competitive than I remember. It was one really big right hand, I think, in that second or third round, whatever round it ended, and that kind of put sure. uh, Brady on back a little bit. But he was doing some decent work. Some folks thought he had won the first round against him. Still, some questions about how he deals with pressure. Even Bilal Muhammad, I think, this week saying to the Anakin Florian podcast, I don't think Sean Brady likes getting hit, which means he loses composure. Speaking of, Luke. We have that clip? We do have that clip. You should read the rundown more often. I do read the rundown. I just I didn't see that. That's kind of uh, funny. Let's hear from the champion, Bilal Muhammad, who stopped by Anakin Florian to give his thoughts on the matchup, and particularly here, the weaknesses, the key weaknesses of both fighters. Brady looked so good his last fight. And for Burns, he was looking good until he got finished. So I think it just comes now to how hungry is Burns? Uh, is he still motivated in there? Because he keeps he's talking about yeah I want to fight Usman or Leon next, but he just doesn't seem like the same confident guy that like mm. I can still chase the title. I'm still there because even if he wins, Jack Della's still ahead of him for the title shot, and you still know you got a long road to go. So for him now coming off of two losses, I think it just comes down to how motivated he is. I think Burns hits harder. Um, but I do think that uh, Brady has better wrestling and is probably stronger on top if he ends up taking him to the ground. And Burns is comfortable off his back. So I, I could see it being one of those where Brady keeps taking him down and Burns goes for submissions off his back and really doesn't get nowhere with it. And Brady ends up winning uh, a decision that way. But I don't think Brady likes to get hit. So if Burns lands one of those big overhand rights, I, think him, I see him dropping Brady. There, there looked to be a couple moments even in the Gastelum fight. The problem with Gastelum is the only offense he had were single punches at a yep. single time. Mm -hmm. But they almost looked like they were partially moving Brady. They were having an impact that if he had been able to obviously stop the takedown, put together some combinations on the feet. Are the questions about Brady's chin still legitimate entering this fight? Um, I don't think he's got a bad chin. I, in fact, if you go back into the Bilal fight, he got stopped on his feet just because he wasn't answering the punches. But he didn't get, like, chinned and then bowled over it's not exactly what happened but i do recognize are there potentially and listen to the word that i'm saying are there potentially some composure issues there could be we have to see we have to see and i don't know necessarily if gilbert's that guy but you know i went back and i watched a bunch of gilbert fights for this one this is to me like for as many questions as there might be about sean brady because we haven't fully seen the the entire depth and breadth of his game sure it's a different set of questions for gilbert which is what does he have left? Well, I want to bring that up to you because I, I think that's the biggest question mark in this matchup. And I think when you look at the three sort of big points against him entering this fight, 38 years old, two fight losing streak, and in particular stopped in his last fight against Jack Della Maddalena, Mr. Bobalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina. But it feels, Luke, like you can just take that and be like, okay, maybe this feels like Brady coming up and having a big moment. And this is uh, Burns trying to get a last stand, but he's on the way out. Then you go back and rewatch those fights and figure out the circumstances of the two-fight losing skid. 
I don't discount what he did against Bilal, considering the circumstances. Took an extreme last minute, wasn't 100%, was injured. I think he regrets probably taking that big yeah, swing. He shouldn't have taken that fight. It's a gamble you take, and if you get the win, then you you know no one ever knows or you never have to play it up. But he took a gamble and lost. But look, specifically the Jack Della Maddalena fight. Not only was Gilbert up two rounds to zero on two of three scorecards entering the final round, where as long as he just finished the fight standing, so to speak, he's going to win that by split decision. He took Jack down and had his back as late as 145 to go in that fight, in a fight he was winning, only to get brutally hurt by a knee and then get stopped. He got reversed when he went to suck out the, because uh, De La Madalena was posting on the elbow, when he went to pull that out to flatten him, he got turned over. I mean, that that's a very rare, difficult For thing sure. that De La, De La Madalena did. And it's a, it's a big move from De La Madalena to answer the call of his coaches in the corner and do it so calmly and execute. And now if you look back at that fight, Jack Della had the better exchanges in the terms of volume and punching, but Gilbert landed the bigger blows on the feet, and he obviously had big moments controlling that fight on the ground. So, look, I think it's fair to push back against uh, the idea that oh, two losses, a knockout, 38. We're still getting a very elite Gilbert Burns. That's my belief coming in here. What are your thoughts? I am not sure if we're going to get a very elite just because age is a... It's just hard to overcome that. But aren't these, I don't mean to stereotype by by region or whatever, but aren't these Brazilians different? Aren't we seeing well, RDA, Glover, Vanderlei for a stretch, Anderson Silva linger at old age and still have a, a high level with them? I think to an extent you can make that argument. And certainly remember, Dorinho was a world champion in Brazilian jiu-jitsu before he ever even went to MMA. This is a guy who's been competing at a high level for a very long time. He takes, I think, in general, really good care of his body. He prepares very well. He understands how to prepare. He is highly experienced. I mean, you could say, uh, to an extent, Brady is somewhat untested. I mean, obviously, he's been tested against some good guys, but the full slate of them, he hasn't. Well, that's not the case with Gilbert Burns. But I got to tell you, BC, we're kind of missing the story here. What's interesting is Gilbert Burns can pressure, to an extent like Bilal did, is probably faster of the two in terms of hand speed between he and Brady more to the point, like Gilbert Burns has good takedowns himself. He has good back-taking ability himself. That first takedown he had on De La Maddalena where he goes for a high crotch and then tripped out the far side leg and then whipped him around and went to his back. Like, what's interesting to me about this Brady and Gilbert thing is we keep thinking, oh, well, Brady's going to want to get on top, and I do think that that's true. Yeah. But I actually feel like Gilbert could to turn the tables and be like, aha, before you even get a chance to do that, I'm going to take your back, and I'm going to be the guy who's on the top position, and I'm going to be the and one just threatening bullies jokes. You, yeah. And just bully you, and, well, and it messes with your composure, challenges your composure, Brady, right? I do think Brady is going to be much stronger than him. I don't think that that part is so much in doubt. Remember, Gilbert used to fight at 155. You couldn't find I a way to make it. sometimes people forget because he's covered in so many tats. Brady's built like a brick shit He's house. fucking huge. Yes. He's huge. So I do think he's going to be the stronger guy of the two. It's interesting to me, what does Gilbert, uh, because he was going for a lot of, he has a big kicking game which I don't think he's going to want to do as much against Brady because Dude, Brady will catch it and then Ga run it Gastelum back. Gastelum was having made – his corner was telling him in that fight, do yeah. not kick him, do not attempt that. And he just you know, didn't really listen all that much. But I think, I think Burns probably will at least more. But that means he has to get closer to Brady in order to get, yeah. to, to get his hands going, which means that the takedown is going to be a little more available. Credit to Bilal Muhammad. Dude, Bilal kind of having this sort of hunched over – I'm, I'm here, I'm in the wrong spot – kind of having this hunched over stance – so that he could get his hips behind him and down block. Yeah. Brady could never really get all that close with some of those takedowns. Can Gilbert do that over the course of three, four, potentially five rounds? This is what I mean. This is a really intriguing oh, contest. It's a chess match that's going to be high speed, high level, high, high level adjustments mentally. It's going to be a great fight. Uh, the Brady sort of, I don't say black cloud or bad. I mean, there's still something lingering from that ball fight. Even though he bounced back perfectly against Gastelum and dominated I think there's still questions of whether can he win at this level when the fight isn't contested on his own terms. But for whatever it's worth, the idea that he got fraud checked or whatever against Bilal keeps coming up online. And Brady went to media day yesterday and took it <laughs> and called these keyword warriors back out right in front of everyone. Let's hear it. Everybody was like, oh, he's a fraud. He got fraud. Yeah. Went yeah. Blah, and then, and I don't know. I don't understand the fraud check thing. Like, I don't like, first of all, Twitter fucking sucks. Full, it's a cesspool. <laughs> Full of miserable, miserable people. <laughs> it's insane. Like, and I'm not like a like, but like these people on there are nuts. Like the shit you never say anything that these guys say like to your face. Like there's some fucking dork in their mom's basement just eating Cheetos. But 
it's how like I got fraud checked, Joey got fraud checked, someone, a bunch of other guys got like. I'm, how are you? A, how like what's getting fraud checked by a fighter who's in the top ten, top fifteen? I just don't understand it. So like that's frustrating to see because um, it's never other fighters who are saying it. And if it is, then like it's very, it's far, it's many guys don't do that, you know. But um, yeah, I don't understand the fraud check thing. But yeah, I guess I got fraud checked by the UFC champion. Thanks, bro. He kind of nailed parts of that, right? Yeah, yeah, I think parts of it. He nailed a lot of it. I mean, there is such a thing as a fraud check where you get an overhyped prospect yep. that finally goes up against some kind of known quantity, sometimes not even a celebrated one, and gets run over. You would be able to get closer with the um, – who's the Chi Wee Wee's guy? What's his name again? Raul Rosas. Raul Rosas. I wouldn't call it fraud check because he's still so young. Sure. But it's something a little bit more like that. If you lose to the guy in a quasi-ish number one contender fight, who then, was it one fight later, whatever it was, or two fights two later, fights later, goes on to become a fucking champion in the weight class, that's less a fraud check and more maybe like a little bit of a return to earth. That's okay. There was a little bit of a decline, but it's you're not a fraud if you're, you're top right. five, okay. top seven in the world. First of all, it, it's it's twi it's angry, lazy basement Twitter, guys, and, and you, anyone can get caught up in that. But I think the fact that he combusted in a way. I mean, he got, again, he got stopped by the guy who went on to become champion. No fault. But I think what fuels the haters is the fact that he seemed to fall apart once those punches. Left. I have a feeling. I, I went back and I, I was trying to figure out, like, what was the problem against Bilal? And you can pick up tactical stuff about shot selection and, and everything else. The issue for me was that uh, he could not keep, like, one of the biggest things is pressure is so important in MMA because so many guys cannot fight going backwards or uh, <clears throat> laterally. Right. Uh, it's just a big problem. Most guys are not very good at it. And so you're watching Bilal pressure Brady. And Brady's response, he was landing on him. Like, there's a, he landed a couple of good left hooks. There were some body kicks that he landed. He came this close to, like, taking Bilal's head off with a front kick. You remember? They, he just missed. But in general, he couldn't find anything to really deter or change Bilal's game plan. Law was kind of able to stay in his face a little bit. And I was watching how he threw. He kind of throws like one or two punch combinations or like one big strike, and then he, he resets. I would like to see Brady physically commit to striking 100%. a little bit harder yes. to make these guys deterred from trying to get close to him at times. Because time. I think what you're saying is fueling the opinion that can he, you know, or the question, can he beat a top guy when his A game isn't dominant? Right. And there's been a lot of fighters like that. You know, when when, when, it, when, they're, when it's going to script, it's perfect. Can he make those adjustments? That's what he's going to have to prove in this fight because it's five rounds against, against a guy that is so durable despite coming off of a stoppage, a brutal stoppage. But uh, I just don't want to see Gilbert get old in the championship rounds, and this will be the the, the telltale, right? Because you know Brady's going to bring the fight with a big motor. There's going to be a lot of grappling. I want to see Gil what Gilbert will show us if he's old, what he does in rounds four and five. That's right. If, if it gets there, ultimately. F fully agree. Common opponent time. Does it matter at all that they both grappled Craig Jones in a big uh, showcase and Brady won a decision and Burns got submitted? Not necessarily, because in the rule set that Brady competed against Jones, I think they had outlawed heel hooks and maybe footlocks of any kind, but I know for a fact they couldn't do heel hooks. You know, you're taking away a very significant weapon to make that contest more equal. So does Brady tap Gabby? I'm sure. I'm... I wouldn't doubt it. How about submission? <laughs> <laughs> she had both of her nipples pierced. I was, I, 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 well, you know, that's I'm like, her, that's yeah, very that's, aggressive. That's that a is lot. very aggressive. That's a lot. But, yeah. That's a lot. Um, but either way, I would, I, I, if you're asking whose ground game is better, certainly in pure jujitsu, Gilbert has done vastly better. If you're talking about MMA and who is, you know, um, sort of physically suited for the weight class, you might give a slight lean to like, who's got the best version of a game, the top game of Brady might be the best, but I, I can't over understate this or underrate this. Burns' ability to wrestle up, Burns' ability to find the back, Burns' ability to create and scramble, I think is superb. I do think he would have a hard time holding Brady down Agreed. without taking the back. So that's kind of an interesting thing. Dude, Brady went to full mount four times against Gastelum, who's certainly not awful on the ground. He's not Gilbert Burns. Right, but not awful. Went to full mount and was just yeah. raining down on him. No, he's very good. And he also, he would give up the back when you would see uh, Gastelum sit up. He'd take the far side hook out, put the near side hook in, and then 
Turk and yes. leg ride it so he couldn't move and destabilize him. Like things like that. He's very even Mike. We had Michael Chiesa. Remember we did um, Room Service Diaries with him, and he was, he was like, great. dude. He was like, dude, Sean Brady's grip felt like being held by a gorilla. Like, he couldn't believe how strong okay, he was. Okay, so if Sean puts together the striking, this is interesting. I think what is going to make this fight extra exciting, the length of it, is that if there's one thing that Gilbert's shown with age, I think his his output is down, which is natural. But like he showed against Jack Dela, he doesn't need to throw as much if what he's throwing is well-timed and powerful. Do you remember that step-in elbow that he did? It was like a short right hook instead mm-hmm. it was a lead elbow. He lands big flush shots like that. He may he may wobble or drop Brady. It may turn the fight around instantly. So I really feel like this this feels like a pick'em. Yet the odds have Brady as the favorite. But Barely. I see, but I see just as many people going. Brady's wrestling is better, and that's the difference. As there are people that are going, you're giving me plus money on Gilbert right now after what he did to Madalena before the stoppage. Yeah. Like I don't know what Gilbert? do you know the the, the DraftKings odds? Let's say the. I got Gilbert on DraftKings plus one sixty four. So was you're a taking days Gilbert? Ago. Yeah, just because he's a dog. Main card minute going live Saturday? Yes, sir. It's the best Tune podcast in, not named MK, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Is Gaff going to be ripping bong hits live? Of course. Oh, oh yeah. All right. That's yeah, worth the price of admission right there. Uh, Luke, do you have a pick here? Are, are, you, are you feeling a direction? I love what this does. I love what the winner's going to get. The loser's going to take a step back. There's no question about that. A pretty big step back, right? Um, if it's Brady, it's recoverable. If it's Gilbert, it's not. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um, so that's an interesting one. I mean, here's the thing. Gilbert has proven more and has proven to be more well-rounded. But at age 38, I simply don't know what's left. I, I'm, I'm saying that. I don't know. I mean, we'll have to see. I'd probably slightly lean Brady as well. But it's tough. Dude, that's we, a tough you, one. we cannot. Can we just say this out loud? We cannot count out Gilbert Burns. He I'm may, not counting he, him out. He may have I a said moment. slight, slight lean Brady. Slight lean. These guys just still find new ways to resurrect. Like, dude, if if Gilbert ended up like punishing Brady on the feet a little bit, taking his back and choking him out, I mean, that would be impressive. But would you be shocked? No. Why would you be shocked? He's been doing this shit to guys for a long, or you know, versions of that for a long time. And again, I want to say it one more time: like, of all the differences between their games, the vast experience that Gilbert Burns has against every kind of opponent that is available to him, he is just. Much more battle tested. Much more battle tested. Indeed, indeed. Can't wait for this one, uh, Luke. Uh, do you have do you, how far does the winner make a leap? Like, what are we talking about contention wise here? Uh, I have not seen the rankings, so I'm a little six bit six and eight. Six and eight. Ahead. Yeah, probably top five ish, something like that. It, it depends on who else. Who else is in the top five? I mean, they they're still keeping Colby there. They're still keeping Kamaru yeah, what there. The f- how the Shavkat. fuck is Colby in the top five? It looks I mean, like how Shavkat's the fuck next. Is that possible? It looks like Shavkat's next, and I think uh, who would Usman fight? Uh, Jamaya? Jam- uh, could be. Who was just talking about fighting Usman? I, f- I don't know. Bilal's talking about Bilal's fighting Usman, which, That's I, have, what which I have no about. interest in. Yeah, I think you got to do Shavkat next. So Usman's going to need a big fight. Uh, Dustin Poirier just just KO'd the idea of Colby for MSG. He said he, he's not going to help Colby make money. So that's good because I don't, I don't love that fight. No, I don't like that fight much either. But that's not even in that division. Well, it's in that division, but it's not like a contention fight. Um, Yeah, the winner's going to take a big leap. We're, we'll see. I mean, Jack Della Maddalena has a one-up because he beat Gilbert. What about Jack Della against Kamaru Usman? Damn. That's interesting. I think I think JDM wins that one, though. Dude, I so I went o- over the break. I did a tape study on, like, how the hell did Bilal get those takedowns when Kamaru couldn't? And I went back and I watched the third fight between Kamaru and Leon. Dude, Kamaru's physicality is noticeably dropped off. Noticeably dropped mm-hmm. off. Um, and part of the reason Bilal did so well was because he was actually able to get a low explosive shot into uh, Leon. For the takedown and Kamaru just kind of falls into it because he just cannot explode into position. And I'm like, dude, Dale Atlanta is not the wrestler that Kamaru is, but he is going to be in a much better athletic state. Well, we remember Kamaru as an as a true like he'll be a, probably like a Hall of Famer and all that. He was the pound for pound king at one for point. Sure Hall of Famer, the yeah. streak he had was incredible. But will we consider him an up not not upper room? I usually think there's about five guys in there, but like an upper tier top ten. Not top ten. I mean, he's he's probably the second best welterweight of all time. But he he deserves royal, he deserves flowers and royalty for what he accomplished. There's no for question. sure, the difference. The, there's many differences between GSP and Kamaru. One of them is just as a popular attraction, GSP was massively bigger than Kamaru. Their resumes are actually pretty comparable. I mean, they're not totally the same, but they're pretty comparable. But the level of star power that GSP had was oh, so no, much no bigger question. than what Kamaru ever had. I'm not trying to knock Kamaru. Like, he did some great things 
in terms GSP of having big wasn't fights. in the Black Panther sequel, though. I just want to want to say that he was right. in Captain America. Which one? Uh, Winter Soldier. You're asking the wrong guy. Yeah, no, yeah. he was in it. Uh, look up which one he was. Played Balrog. He played Balrog. Though. He was in. He was in one of them shits. So he actually was in the Marvel movies. How about that shit? All right, fucker. take that shit. Uh, quickly, Luke, on this undercard, dude. I'm into the coal main. Jessica Andrade against a streaking Natalia Silva, who has looked good from the standpoint of volume and striking. I do question whether her lack of fight finishing power uh, will hold her back at the elite level. This seems to be that perfect test to find out. What do you make of this? Bit matchup? of a volume striker in this one. Obviously, Natalia Silva, I don't know if you put the, the thing in. She lost her sister. I did see that this uh, morning. Yeah. Seven or so months ago, and it has derailed her. So, I, again, we always go back to the Brett Favre game when his dad died. And he wasn't stealing from people or were using welfare fraud. <laughs> sure. Does it elevate you or not? Does a does tragedy yes. create a fire for more or your does mileage it, may vary. Your mileage may vary. Um, um by the way, Andraj talking about the potential of a women's BMF fight. And she said publicly this week that Joanna is willing to come out of retirement, which we already knew Joanna said it, but specifically Joanna's willing to come out of retirement. For an Andrade rematch for the female BMF, does that do anything to you? Absolutely nothing. Get, get, okay, take out absolutely. If you said it doesn't do much okay. for me, BC. 100% nothing. Don't have any interest. Zero. Nothing. None. No, say fact, can, fact, you, fact, can you bring in, a voice of reason to this I discussion? In fact, I find the idea a little bit comical, if I can be completely candid. That, what, at the lack of meaning for the belt, if this matchup happens? Or just, at, like, at, why waste your time? At, of all the fights that you could make at, in women's MMA, like, it's not some, like, terrible thing, but... It's trying to identify savages to put together in an all-action fight for fun. But I don't know if Joanna at one time certainly was one. <clears throat> Is she still? I, I really don't Long know Island? the answer to that. I don't think you need to put the BMF title on the line, but I like the fight. Yeah. Well, the fight only matters if the BMF title is on the line in a lot of ways. So I won't say it only matters, but it matters much more if you do. Yeah, all right. for sure. I want to see if Silva can make that step forward. If she can't, this is the wrong fight for her because Andrade still brings that. You, you, know, you know who should be in a BMF fight? Who? Wang Tong. That's who I want to see in a fucking BMF So, fight. So I've been told that I got it wrong and they got it wrong in the broadcast. It's song. 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 Wang Song. Yes. Spelt what? So the C is actually kind a of like an S pronunciation. Yes. Wang Song. They were saying Tong on the broadcast, and then I was told that it, that I was saying it wrong on Again, the show. I have no fucking idea how it's yeah. pronounced, but I know she's fucking awesome. Yeah. She... And we should give her fights like that. Or just get her in line for the title, like start grooming her. <laughs> no, aggressively putting her yeah, in place. Yeah, yeah. the Alex Pereira thing. Like yeah, she I get said. It. I'm All with right. it. I'm with it. Uh, you no know other fights we want to talk about. Uh, hold on. There actually are a couple that I want to get to very quickly if we can. Uh, Matt Schnell is back against Cody Durden, I believe. Oh, no, that one may have been scrapped, but um, the one that was. No, in... that's happening. He was supposed to fight Costa, but he is fighting Durden. Good Durden. Okay, very good. Uh, there was one other one on this that I wanted to, to note. Uh, mm. Actually, no, I take that back. I don't yeah, think that there is. Take that shit back. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> you want to transition to the second topic? Trevor Peak is fighting, oh, which, he makes should fun be, fights. which should be donk. Dude, he throws helicopters when he gets Listen, tired and just squares it's, up. It's great. Yeah. You're not, you're not going to get the most technical fight, but you're not probably not going to get a boring one. That probably. guy's got some dog in him. I like that. He does. He absolutely has some dog in him, yes. Uh, let's 